Okay, let's spend a few minutes talking about bonds. So when a company needs money, there's a few things they can do. They could issue stock. They can go to the bank and get a loan. They can issue bonds, which is another type of loan. Now the difference or the primary reason why a bond is more attractive than, say, a stock issuance is because the interest that companies pay on bonds and or on a loan is tax deductible. Now the dividends that they pay back to stockholders are not tax deductible. So there's a big benefit for companies to issue bonds. In addition, then they're not diluting their stockholders' equity and increasing that as well if they do a stock issuance. So a bond might be preferable to say a bank loan because sometimes they can do them for a lot longer terms and they may be able to get a pref preferable interest rate or a better interest rate issuing the bond. So I have a, an example here. It's hard to find them anymore um, because they're primarily electronically issued. But you will see who the issuer of the bonds are. It would give you the maturity. This was due May 1st, 2008. And interestingly enough, if you can see it, it was issued back in 1909. So when I say a lot longer than a bank loan, truly, this was a 100-year um, bond that was issued way back in the 1900s. And you can see it paid 11.875% interest. So that's quite a good interest rate. You won't find anything comparable to that these days. Now, the problem with a 100-year bond is there's a considerable risk involved as well, a lot of opportunity for the company to go out of business. So those are some of the things that you will find on here. Also the par value, so the face value of the loan was $5,000. So if you bought one of these back in 1909, it would have been for $5,000. And for every year, you would have been paid 11.875% interest on your money. So that would have been a pretty good, pretty good deal back then. All right, so bonds get a little bit tricky, and I'll tell you why. Because when the board meets and um, decides to issue the bonds and at what rate they're going to issue them and the point at which they might actually be issued there's a, a time lag there so even though the market say was paying 10 percent interest once it actually gets issued the market might be paying a different interest level so that's either going to make our bond more attractive in the marketplace or less attractive so let's say our bond is um, paying 10% interest. If the market is paying 8% interest, which one would you rather own? Our bond at 10% interest or the market at 8%? I'm assuming you'll say our bond <laughs> since it's paying a higher interest rate. And so our bond will sell at a premium. People are willing to pay more for our bond because it's going to pay them a higher interest rate than what the market would pay. If um, market and our bond are the same, it will be issued at par value, at that face value, like our previous bond, $5,000. Now, if the market's paying 12% interest on average and ours is only paying 10, that's a problem. Nobody's going to want to buy our bond, so we have to discount it. We actually have to kind of put it on sale to get people to buy it because they can go elsewhere and get 12% interest. So that kind of complicates the accounting for bonds here just ever so slightly. So let's look at an example of a bond that's issued at par value. This is Matrix Inc. and they issued a $1,500,000 par value bond, which happened to be 1,500 bonds at $1,000 face value. Stated rate and market rate are the same, so that means our bond will be issued at face value. Bonds typically pay interest twice a year. So the interest rate that you see stated here, we will have to divide by two when we go to do our interest payment every six months. Bonds dated January 1st, 2010, and it matures in five years. So there's your maturity date. So upon issuance, when we issue the bond, we will receive cash for, in this case, $1,500,000, and we'll credit our long-term liability here, bonds payable for $1,500,000. So the way the bond will work is we will pay interest every six months and then upon maturity we will repay that $1,500 or the face value of that bond to the people who purchased our bond. So you can see here cash goes up and our liabilities also go up upon bond issuance. And as I said, that particular bond market and the stated rate were equal so it was issued at what's called par value or face amount. Let's say now here we're going to issue at a discount. And how I know that, it says the issue price is 92.6405% of par value. That is below 100. That means our bond was issued at a discount. And you can see why. 
the stated rate of our bond was 10% and the market rate was 12%. So our bond is less attractive to others in the marketplace, so we have to issue it a discount. We will not get a million dollars when we go to issue that particular bond. We are only going to get 926,405. That's the face value times that 92.6405%. And we're going to learn how to calculate that amount here a little bit later to figure out what the value of the bond will be. So that bond is issued at a 70. $3,595 discount. So now when we issue the bond, we don't get a million dollars. We're only going to get $926,405. We still have to credit our bonds payable for the full million. That's how much we'll pay back at the end of the uh, due date and the maturity date. And then we will debit this account called discount on bonds payable. It's a contra liability account to our bonds payable. So it will reduce the carrying value of our bond by the amount of the discount. And that's probably better illustrated here. So you can see our balance sheet would show the liability bonds payable at a million dollars and then minus that discount on bonds payable 73,595 and our carrying value of that bond will be 926,405. So every interest payment, we are going to amortize this discount on bonds payable. So we're going to reduce it, kind of like we were doing with our depreciation. We want to reduce it to get our carrying value back up to a million dollars. That also will increase our interest expense with every interest payment. To amortize that, we just use the straight line method. So we will take that bond discount and divide it by the number of interest payments. So with every interest payment, $7,360 will be added to our interest expense. So here's an example. To make our um, interest payment every six months, we need to credit cash for $50,000. That's the amount of the interest, which is a million dollars times 10% times six over 12, six months out of 12 or half of the year. $50,000 is our interest payment. That's a credit to cash. That's what we will pay our bondholders every six months. And then um, we had to amortize that discount on bonds payable. So again, we take the discount divided by 10 periods. So every interest payment, we will credit discount on bonds payable by $7,360. Those two added together now become our bond interest expense. So had this bond been issued at market, are at par value, bond interest expense would be $50,000, cash would be credited for $50,000. Now let's look at a bond issuance at a premium. In this case, our bond is paying 10%, the market's only paying 8 Now our bond is more attractive to everyone in the marketplace. They're willing to pay us a premium to buy our bond. And you can also tell that because here it's issued over 100%. So they are paying us 108% of face value to buy that bond. So it looks a little bit different than the discount. So the cash we will receive is the 1 million times the 108.1145%. So $1,081,145 we will receive in cash from the bondholders. Credit bonds payable a million dollars. That's what we'll pay back upon maturity. And we credit premium on bonds payable, which is an adjunct liability account. So it gets added to our bonds payable account. And the interesting thing here, the premium now will decrease the amount of bond interest expense that we have. So now we have bonds payable and we add to it the premium on bonds payable. So our carrying value is actually over and above the $1 million face value. We will amortize that just like we did the bond discount. Take the um, premium amount, 81145 divided by the 10 interest payments, five years, two payments per year. That's $8,155. So that will be reducing our interest expense by that much every six months. So again, credit to cash when we make an interest payment for $50,000. We already went through that calculation. Now we debit premium on bonds payable, 8115 so you can see that our bond interest expense is now reduced to $41,885.
So let's figure out how they calculated that 92 whatever uh, percent to figure out the present value of the bond. Okay, so let's look at how we calculated the um, present value of that particular bond. So again, sorry, our um, stated rate is 10%, the market rate is 12%. So what does that tell us? Well, the markets, uh, people are going to prefer the market to our bond, so our bond's going to be issued at a discount. The question is how much of a discount? So we can calculate that. If you go to the tables in your book, I think um, the time value of money tables, I think they were at the end of chapter 6. Table 6-4 is the factor for calculating the present value of a dollar. So that would apply to our bond payment. So we would multiply um, the factor times the face value of the bond. So this bond happened to be a million five hundred thousand dollar bond. So how do we determine the factor here, this 0.5584? Well, we go to that present value of a dollar table and we are going to go down the number of periods. Well, this was a five-year bond that's going to pay interest twice a year, what, what we see here. Five-year bond pays interest twice a year, so our n will be 10. So we'll go down to the number of periods equals 10, and then we're going to go across until we get to 6%. Well, the market rate was 12%, and we would divide that by 2 because we'll make two interest payments per year. So that would be 6%. So we'll go um, across the number of periods to where we get to the 6% column. And you should see the factor table there at 0.5584. Then we're going to do the exact same calculation using the present value of an annuity. So this will give us the value. That would be the value of our bond. We want to determine its value in today's dollars. So that bond, is, if we were... Is, <laughs> In today's dollars, the equivalent would be $837,600. And then assuming an interest rate, again, of 12% compounded every six months, that would uh, accumulate to $1,500,000 in five years. So the interest component of this, that we're paying interest on that bond every six months, we use the present value of an annuity of a dollar table. Still go down to 10 and over to 6%. And that will give us 7.3601. Multiply that times the amount of the interest payment. In this case, it was a million five hundred thousand dollar bond times 10% times half a year, so 75,000. So those interest payments in today's dollars are worth 552,008 dollars. Add that up. This is what people are willing to pay us for the bond: one million three hundred eighty-nine thousand six hundred and eight dollars. That's how we determine the issue price of the bond. And then when we actually would go and issue it, we would debit cash for that present value of the interest payments and of the actual face value of the note. Credit short-term debt or notes payable for the million five hundred thousand that we'll have to pay back upon maturity. Now the difference between the two becomes our discount on bonds payable, which is debited. So our liabilities increase for bonds payable Discount on bonds payable actually decreases our bonds payable, and then um, because it's an adjunct liability, and then we cash is debited for the proceeds on that particular sale. Okay, one last topic will be bond retirement. So, what do we do upon conclusion of the bond? Well, we have to pay back the face value of the note. So, we debit bonds payable for face value, credit cash. All the discount and premium should have been fully amortized out. So this is what we would be left with. Now, what if we um, retire the bond before maturity? And we can do that with a callable bond. If the carrying value is greater than the retirement price, we have a gain. If it's less than the retirement price, we have a loss. So here's what I typically tend to tell students. Put in what we know, and what we don't know will become our gain or loss. So we have to get rid of the carrying value of the bonds, which is the bonds payable and the um, discount or premium on bonds payable, record any cash paid, and then we'll recognize the gain or loss. So for example here, we had a million five hundred thousand dollar bond issued, and then we're going to retire um, a million dollar face amount of bonds paying bondholders a million twenty thousand dollars. Often when a company calls the bond in early, they have to pay a little bit extra. 
and then it had an unamortized discount of $62,000. So we need to get rid of the face amount of the bond, so we debit bonds payable for the million dollars. We have this discount that we need to get rid of on our books as well. Um, it normally would carry a debit balance, so we have to credit discount on bonds payable $62,000. Then we credit cash for the amount paid, a million twenty thousand. Now look at your debits and your credits. Your debits would be a million, your credits would be a million eighty two thousand dollars. So that's a difference of eighty two thousand. That becomes our loss on bonds payable. Hope that gives you a little bit of a background on bonds. Thank you.